Hey YouTube, it's Chuck. Good morning. So I've got a, another how-to for you this morning. A little bit of a garage chemist experiment again, but this is one of the things I've been talking about I, I wanted to do for a little while. And this is about using thymol. Thymol, some people don't pronounce the H. Uh, and it, that's what I have right here. These are thymol crystals. This is a 500 gram bottle of it. I'll put a link in the description below where I get it. Uh, this will last you a while. Um, Timol has a lot of uses in beekeeping. Uh, some people use it for varroa mite control. It's a little bit uh, harsh, so you gotta use it correctly. Um, but what I have started using it for is to make something that was documented uh, by, by many on the internet, going back into Dave Cushman's website. Matter of fact, if you search, for uh, thymolized syrup on the internet, you're probably gonna end up on Dave Cushman's website. I'll stick a little screenshot here. Uh, Roger Patterson has kind of taken over that as Dave Cushman has passed away and is kind of continuing to document these subject areas. But there's a discussion of using thymol uh, dissolved um, and, and adding it to different uh, things, specifically sugar syrup. And I have started doing that this year rather than using a, a little bit of bleach in my syrup to keep all of the mold away. Uh, from my sugar syrups, uh, and it is very effective. I, I've had jars out here for weeks in this uh, Florida sun, and there is no mold rings on any of my jars. Uh, and it also has some benefits if you uh, up the dose a little bit for nosema control. I know nosema isn't something uh, many beekeepers worry about these days unless you get some dysentery or some sort of other indications that, that might be uh, having problems in, inside their guts, but I'm using it for sugar syrup, and that's what I'm gonna discuss today. This is the end product. It's a little bit of a milky substance. I write the instructions for my dosing on here so I can uh, replicate my success. But I'm gonna take you along with me today on how I make it. The basics of it are taking thymol, dissolving it in 91% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, it has to be dissolved in alcohol because it will not dissolve in water. And I think that's one critical thing there. And then for emulsification of the syrup, soy leth lecithin is used uh, in order to act as an emulsifier. So this is another handy thing to have in your shop if you, if you need to emulsify things. So putting things like essential oils uh, into solution, you have to use some sort of emulsification, uh, otherwise it, it'll just uh, separate back out and go into the top of solution. So as I uh, start this process, I'm gonna do a little bit of safety. Thymol is a little bit caustic, and just so you know, look at all the warnings on the side of the label. It's basically about touching your skin, don't get it in your eyes, and things like that, just because it's a little bit of caustic. So I'll take off my readers, and I use these uh, safety glasses that have cheaters in them, because I, of course, still need to see, and gloves just for touch. It's, this is not um, super dangerous to handle. I'm just telling you, re read the labels and understand what you're, what you're doing when you do it. Okay, so first of all, I, I measured out 60 grams of the, this um, thymol already. And just so you know, on the scale here, 60 grams, it looks like by volume, it's, you know, I don't know, around, um, around 100 milliliters just in volume here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna get my 50 milliliters of alcohol. And I, I've got to this point by basically um, trial and error last time on how much it took to uh, dissolve this much kind of quickly. Uh, so 50 milliliters was the number. I know the recipe on Dave Cushman's website has a lot less uh, alcohol. I added a little bit more and it worked a little bit better. I do have a double boiler going over here. So this is just a hot water bath. This water is boiling. Um, but what I wanna show you here is I'm putting my 60 grams. And if you didn't notice that when I poured it out, this kind of clumps up and there's like big rocks of it. So the alcohol is here to help, you know, kind of dissolve it into solution. And it does say on, on Dave Cushman's website to go ahead and immerse that in a hot water bath to speed it up. So that is boiling water at the moment. And I have got my alcohol and my thymol dissolving. The next thing is to take about 250 milliliters of water. This ratio is ultimately to get the volume and the, and the dosing of the water to the thymol right. Um, about 140 milliliters of this boiling water. I'm sorry, 250 milliliters. And there's 250. And dissolving two teaspoons of, of lecithin. 
Um, if you haven't ever seen what lecithin looks like, it comes in these granules. Looks a little bit like coarse cornmeal, I guess you could say. Now, the volume of lecithin is probably not as critical to get down precisely because some of this actually will not dissolve. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stick two in there. And that is boiling water. And then I will continue to stir this out. Now, if all of this lecithin, less, I'm gonna stop pronouncing that word because it's hard for me to say with my Invisalign in. Um, if all this doesn't go into solution, you just kind of strain out the little bits that don't. So here we've got both jars in a double boiler and miraculously, because I used that dosage of um, alcohol a little bit higher than Dave Cushman's, it's almost in solution. And boy, I tell you, it, it doesn't look like water. Uh, it looks like something is in there. So that is dissolved thymol, and we're working on a little bit of soy emulsifier here. Now, as this continues to heat up, all we have to do after these are dissolved, and really both of them are dissolved, is we have to blend them and emulsify them. And after they're blended, they are gonna get into this uh, milky state. Now this is a little bit of my last batch, and I'm just going to include it in this batch so I only have one. Now, for those of you that haven't heard me say, I love going to garage sales to find old tools that I can use in my shop so I don't need to borrow my wife's uh, equipment, here's an old blender. Now, if you didn't know this, this old style blender comes with this style cap that goes on here. Look at this magic. So here's a five pound honey jar. This will blend in this jar. So I don't need to put, put any fancy lids or anything like that on there. I use this as my blending container uh, inverted. So I'm just gonna put the last batch in here so it gets blended in uh, with the new mixture as it continues to heat up. And I'm gonna stir my soy a little bit more. And just to kind of show you, my thymol is completely dissolved in the alcohol solution we have there. Okay, now thymol has a little bit of a um, strong flavor, scent. You can tell when you've used uh, thymol in something, it's very aromatic. It comes from the thyme plant. Uh, if you've ever used thyme in the garden, if you've rubbed your hand on it, it's very oily and, and, and the aromas are very, very strong. So as part of that, um, you, when you put it in your syrup, you're going to know if you put thymolized uh, thymol in it. And I'm going to go ahead at this part while I'm continuing to heat up to talk about once it's in this solution, how do you use it? Now on Dave Cushman's website and updated by Roger Patterson, there are some uh, references to the Manly strength. Manly was the first guy to go ahead and do this or to document it perhaps. And on Dave Cushman's website, I encourage you to go there and read a little bit of the history. But there was this basic recipe that we're making right now and they've kind of termed it Manly strength. So a Manly strength of one is one dose. And then if you need a little bit more for like a Nozema treatment or to fight things a little bit more, you do like a two times manly recipe or a three times or all the way up to five or six times manly recipe. All that means is instead of using, you know, uh, about a teaspoon of this per 13, um, uh, I believe it's about two and a half gallons, you, you know, you'd use two teaspoons to go to manly two, to manly three. I use just roughly two teaspoons of this mixture in a five gallon, um, one-to-one -one syrup recipe, uh, and that is all it's taken. If I want a little bit less or a little bit higher, it's gonna be fine. So depending on your dosing, you know, kind of use that out. If you're making a two and a half gallons, maybe use one teaspoon. If you're making 10 gallons, then maybe you need four or five teaspoons. Um, that's about the ratio. And honestly, I don't even measure. I kind of pour the amount that looks about two teaspoons and then I mix it in. And because it's already in solution due to the soy, it doesn't need much mixing. It just goes straight into the solution. So that is how you mix uh, the manly strengths in your thymolized syrup. So I you know, use about a manly 2x uh, portion uh, in my syrups. Okay, so our soy is pretty much done here now. Oop, I don't wanna spill that. Um, and, and as it stated, you know, it states, all of the soy does not go into solution. There's still a little bit of those granules floating on the top here. They're not gonna completely go into solution, but you don't want those granules in your syrup. So you do need a little bit of a filter. So let me go get a sieve. I'm back. 
a uh, little bit of a strainer and a little bit of funnel because I'm going to need that funnel to get that mixture back into this bottle here. And you'll see that pretty obviously when I'm pouring that that is required to get that back in that bottle. That's just a vinegar bottle. I love using vinegar, bot vinegar bottles for storing things because it's a nice size. It's got a small lid. Okay. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and take my dissolve. I'm all, I'm going to put it into my jar with my previous mix. If you have no previous mix, then you're just putting it in there with the uh, empty jar or empty blender. You do need to, to blend this some way. If you have a hand blender, you could probably do a little bit of um, hand blending. It just depends on what. Now I'm just pouring this 250 milliliters of water that's got the soy. And just to show you, a few granules are still left over there. I just didn't want that in my solution. Now we've got everything in there. We got our, our previous batch. We've got our thymol mixed in there. And this is the magic of the blender in the jar. No leaks. And that's all it takes. And all you're doing is emulsifying and blending. And look at that clear, milky substance there. And of course, my blender adapter. Completed solution. And this recipe I adapted to make about a half a vinegar jar because you're using it teaspoons at a time. If you're running a lot of hives or making a lot of syrup, you know, it took me um, about three months to go through most of that syrup I had previously made. Um, so that batch makes that much. So if you wanted to double it, maybe you needed 120 grams of thymol with about 500 milliliters of water and that would have filled up this full vinegar jar. Um, that is how I make my base syrup I put two teaspoons of this and about five gallons of my one-to-one -one syrup. You can put it in your two-to-one also. It's about by volume. Um, but I've got another secret for this syrup, but it's not for this video. But just to tease it, if you are a bird watcher and you love hummingbirds, maybe check out the next video because I've got an experiment going on that could be a game changer for bird watchers. Have a great day. Let me know what you think about this uh, in the comments below and hopefully it's helpful for you. Check out the links in the descriptions. If you need any of these ingredients, I'll just kind of point you that direction. Not worried about any sort of affiliates or stuff like that, but it'll get you pointed the right direction. But it's pretty handy to have. I'd say this is for, you know, the end of basic to advanced to intermediate beekeepers to start having thymol and things like that in your garden. It's not hard to make. You just do need a few tools and maybe just a little bit of know-how, but that's what this video is for. Have a great day, everybody.